Vince, we're back at Pilot Mountain, and uh, you know we were discussing picket systems in so many ways people put them, put them up in, in different configurations. Uh, do you mind going over with us just the basic operation of pickets and what they're used for? No, I'll be glad to, Carney. First of all, you've got to assemble the equipment that you're going to be utilizing, uh, and that's going to be dependent on the load you're expecting. Uh, for normal loads, something like a 1-1 or a 1-1-1 picket system will be sufficient. Uh, if you get into extremely heavy loads, we'll set up like 3-2-1s or multiple 3-2-1s and join them together. But we're just going to do a basic 1-1-1 picket system, which is normally going to meet our our requirements. And when we look at those loads, a one picket system is normally for about 700 pounds. That's a right. A one one being around 1,400 pounds. And if we go to a one one one, that's normally gauged at around 2,000 pounds. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and it's going to depend on the soil type. You know how recently the soil's been disturbed. If you're in a construction site that you know the soil's been disturbed, it's not going to be quite as strong. If you got compact soil, of course you can get the full strength out of it. As we move into the mountains, you got a lot of rocks, you have problems. If you move towards the coast, you got a lot of sand, you get some, some variances. So it does depend on the soil type. Well, what's our minimum equipment we need to set up pickets? Okay, to do the 111 picket system, we're going to need three pickets. Uh, and we can look at those right here. We're typically going to use a piece of cold rolled steel, uh, somewhere around four to five feet long. Uh, we're going to need three of those. That's where we get the 111. Uh, and we're going to need three of those. Uh, we're going to need a couple of smaller diameter metal rods. Some people call them spinners. I believe a technical term for them is a windlass. And these are used to tighten up the system. And we're going to need a couple of uh, half inch ropes. About 25 to 50 foot will normally suffice. And we use these to connect the pickets together so that they actually build on each other, much like a truss system would work in building construction. Uh, they use the strength of each other to, to hold them in place. And of course, we're going to need a sledgehammer or something similar so we can drive the pickets into the ground. When we set the pickets, I know I've seen all kinds of angles that they're supposed to be at, but our correct angle of putting the actual pickets at a 15 degree angle, is that correct? Yeah, normally we want the, the angle that the picket sets at least 15 degrees. When we talk about 15 degrees, we're talking about from the vertical, we're talking about it's gonna lean about 15 degrees minimum away from the direction of pull. And, and I know when we're looking at that degrees, there's also a, a, a standard that we look at as far as how we set our pickets back, which is normally going to be what? Normally we talk about the picket length. If we're using four foot pickets, basically the first picket, then you're going to go back four feet, which is one picket length for the second picket, and then another four feet for the third. If they're five foot pickets, of course it's going to take a little bit. And that's just a rough estimate. Okay. And this is to give us enough soil in between them that they don't compromise the strength if this one starts to bend and give in the soil, you don't want that to actually affect the holding strength of the second picket. Now, we don't need to get a measuring tape out to be able to lay these. We simply do what? Well, normally most people will just take and lay one picket down, and then you put the second picket there, and then that'll show us where to put the third picket. And then they're in a proper configuration. Again, we're going to drive these in at about a 15 degree angle from the direction of pull. We don't want to drive it in 15 degrees this way and pull off to the side. This gives us the max pull, uh, the max strength for the pull. The maximum angle we can go to, if for some reason we had a load that was going in an upward direction, the maximum angle we can go to is 45 degrees. Okay. If you go past 45 degrees, then you start losing the strength because you're not driving it in as deep. Okay. And the bottom's going to be the part that's going to kick out. So that's going to be the limiting factor. Uh, and Again, on our depth of driving the picket in, we're going to go two-thirds the total length of the picket. That's correct. We're going to drive it in about two-thirds. If these were three feet long, we're going to drive it in about two feet. Okay. Uh, five feet, you know, just two-thirds of whatever the length is, and it's going to be an approximate. Now, I've seen some people get the actual pickets and, and uh, our, our other pieces here mixed up when they look at them. What's going to happen if somebody tries to use just rebar as a picket system composed to what you have there? Well. The rebar is going to be a little bit difficult to drive in and pull out, especially if you get something in the, the one inch rebar uh, size, because it's got a lot of corrugation on the sides, give you a lot of hold strength, but it's going to make it difficult to drive it in and pull it out. But this small rebar just doesn't have the strength. It's going to bend. It's going to compromise because you're going to drive this in to this point. You're going to anchor the top of this one to the bottom of the second picket, and the weak point's actually going to be in the middle. And as this starts to flex and bend, then it's going to want to pull out. 
that's nowhere near going to give us like if we did the one the 700 pounds this just simply is not going to do it oh no we do that no that's small diameter stuff like i said a minimum of one inch diameter cold rolled steel you can make these out of uh just metal cold rolled steel that you get at a, a construction supply store or you can actually buy these commercially some people make them uh, the commercial ones actually come with a duplex head and all kinds of things, uh, but it's, it's just optional. It's a matter of personal preference. We ready to drive some pickets? Let's do it, but before we do, we got to make sure we're wearing the proper gear. Uh, of course, we're driving metal to metal. If a piece of metal was to fly off, it could put your eye out or you get cut. So we're going to wear our gloves, helmets, and of course, our eye protection. All right. Now Vince, we've got the pickets driven in the ground now. One thing we didn't mention before, but we certainly did and we would want everybody else to do, before we drive anything in the ground, it's very important to do what? Well, we need to check for underground utilities or any other hazards that would be present. We wouldn't want to drive one of these into an underground power feed or, or something of that nature. Could be a hot situation. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are we going to do next? Well, now that we've got the pickets driven, we're going to take one of our 25 to 50s, and this is about a 50-foot piece of half-inch kern mantle rope and we're going to start off with a clove hitch on the top. We're going to take that 25 to 50 foot piece of rope, we're going to find the center of it, and that's where we're going to tie our clove hitch. And we're just going to take and tie the clove hitch right here, place it on the top of the first picket. We're going to take both tails, and we're going to travel to the bottom of the second picket. For some reason, I've seen this create a problem for a lot of people. They'll think that this needs to go to the bottom of the first one and to the top, but that's actually counterproductive. We want to go from the top to the bottom, and then we're just going to travel with both pieces. You would hold it now for me, Carney. We're going to travel with both legs from bottom to top, and once we get to this point, we're going to have to secure this off. There's multiple ways you can secure it off. You can tie a couple of half hitches uh, around all of the ropes. You can do a round turn and two half hitches, or you can do a clove hitch. It's just a matter of personal preference of which text you're reading. So we're going to use two half hitches to lock this off. Yeah, I believe our state lesson plan calls for two half hitches, so that's what we're going to use today. Now, if we just stop right here, that wouldn't work too good. Obviously, we have a lot of slack in the rope, and uh, I have have witnessed a couple of people of trying to put these up and wonder what's going on with the rope falling just like this. That's right. That's what our windlass, or that spinner rod, as some people refer to it as, uh, is used for. We pass this through the center, and we just spin it to put enough tension into the system. We're not trying to, to pull the system over. This is not designed to hold the load. This is designed to take the slack up so that the strong point, the lowest point that's exposed out of the ground of the second picket is snug with no slack to the top of the first picket. And once we get that, we're gonna drive that in. And this doesn't have to go in far at all. That's probably sufficient, okay? What we've completed right here is actually a one, one picket, okay? If we were just tied to the first picket, that's the 700. We've got a 1-1 one, one system which is in play. So we're about, now at 1,400. About 1,400 pounds of strength. Okay. Of course, your load would actually be anchored as low as possible on this front. Two-thirds of this picket is in the ground. The one-third up top is exposed. And this being back tied is much like back tying one tree to another tree or some other type of anchor. That's all we're doing. Okay. And so to get the 1-1 one, one in, we're simply going to repeat this step again. Exactly. Got to find the center of this piece of rope. But right here, we've constructed a good anchor system, and everything we do, whether it's lowers, raises, rappelling, or ascending, we got to have a good anchor. And as we all know, they're not always present. So this is something we can put where we need. Thanks for showing us the picket system, Vince.